Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Atemster. Today I'm going to be going over all the different alpha blend types in the Blender Game Engine. So in this tutorial we'll be going over this alpha blend function here, and we'll be going over all the different types and when and when not to use them. So starting at the beginning here we have opaque. Basically this is the default value that Blender will assign to any texture. It allows for transparency as you can see here when we put other objects beneath it and it's fairly smoothed out. What I've found is it's very similar to alpha blend so they both seem to do the same thing. Opaque actually means no alpha but for some reason it does still allow you to edit. Now there is one problem with opaque and alpha blend and that is basically if you have lots and lots and lots of objects underneath each other sometimes the Z value can get messed up and some in the back start showing up in the front and others in the front show up behind the ones in the back. So again opaque is pretty good but you don't want to be using it in lots and lots of instances such as trees and stuff. Alright, so moving on to the alpha blend of add. So basically what this does is adds the white values of the texture on top of each other. Now to use it, you must have a black background, as you can see here, on your texture, and then choose alpha add from here. On top of this, you also need shadeless applied. Otherwise, if you don't have a light source, then it completely disappears. Now what you can also do is go down to the bottom, choose multiply, and then uh, choose whatever color you want to apply to it. And then the second cool thing is if you duplicate it, you can put multiple layers on top of each other and it will make it look brighter. So this is really useful for any sort of objects that are based around light. So moving on to the next object here, we have alpha clip. And basically what that does is it takes your texture and decides whether it's either 1 or 0, whether it's alpha or no alpha. So to show this working, I've got a cloud texture here and if we go ahead and choose alpha clip, most of the texture gets cut out. You'll also notice there isn't any semi-transparency, it's just either black or white. The good thing about alpha clip is how well defined these are, so regardless of the resolution of the actual image, it will define the edges very, very accurately. The bad thing about this is it makes them very rough. You notice here they're smooth, and then over here they're very rough so you'll need extra filters to go ahead and smooth them out. So the next item here is alpha blend. Again, it's sort of the same as opaque. It does relatively the same thing. If you have too many objects, they'll heap up on top of each other and then have problems with the Z value again. Then over here we have alpha sort. Now alpha sort is basically about making sure that textures appear behind each other so they don't show up in front of each other like they would with alpha blend or opaque. The problem with this is that it's very process intensive which means if you use alpha sort you want to also be using it sparingly to make sure you don't use up too much processing power just for the textures. Now over here we have alpha anti-aliasing this is very recent, so I think 2.76 upwards that you have this option. And basically what it will do is it will just cut around all the values ignoring any blurred values, as you can see here from anti-aliasing. So this is the raw cutout without any blurring. Now in regards to performance, the best ones is going to be anti-aliasing and alpha clip, as they either decide 1 or 0 so you don't have to deal with all the other values and ranges of transparency. Then after that we'll have opaque and we'll have alpha blend and we might also have add. I'm not sure how efficient that is for working with. And then lastly we have the alpha sort function here. So this is the most inefficient and then alpha clip and alpha anti-aliasing are the most efficient. So there we go guys, that's the end of this video, hope you enjoyed it, if you did feel free to leave a like, comment or share down below. If you have any other comments or suggestions for when you'd use these items, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed the video, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.